and welcome to this EUIO Frontrunners podcast about creating and running your own music projects. Let's have a look at slide one, which should introduce us to the EUIO Entrepreneurs Club meets Cafe Bauhaus. We're going to be hearing about and developing four really interesting projects created by a number of, of you who are within the um, Cafe Bauhaus projects. And um, in order to present that, you can see here that if we go to the next slide, you'll be able to see that these are basically four award winners for 2024 from our Cafe Bauhaus project, which is about music, innovation and sustainability. It's actually about how players who are in the orchestra or in this case, recent alumni from the orchestra can be helped to make their own innovative projects, but in the places where they live with the people they know and with the ideas which are really powerful for them. So let's move on to the next slide, which is basically to introduce our two experts for today. So we have here Anastasia Budanok and Hugo, and uh, this is great that we can have both of you. Anastasia is founder and managing director of Primavera Consulting and Primavera Digital. And Hugo Ticciati is, how can I say, violinist, leader, conductor, concertmaster, programmer, thinker, creator, and director of the Omordant Chamber Orchestra. So that's all we need to do in having a look at these slides. Now, we've given the four projects a challenge. Each project will have a maximum of four minutes to present their projects to our two experts, after which we're going to go into breakout rooms where Anastasia and Hugo will work to help develop the presentation of these projects and also the next steps to help make the projects into successful events when they come to be presented as public events uh, in 2024. We so far have four award winners. And if I share my screen now, you may be able to see who those four are, although they're in the room with us at the moment. So we have Alkistis, Sofia, Katharina and Marlin. And a couple of them have also brought along helpers who are going to be working with them on the projects. So actually, without further ado, can I ask the first of you, which I think is Sophia, let's see your presentation. Yes. So hi, my name is Sophia. Uh, I'm really happy to be here with you. And I have a video for, for the presentation. I will share my screen. In the middle of the events that are currently worrying and happening in Europe and the rest of the world, we, the Joska String Quartet, want to present a look that unfolds in two. From there the title and the start of this journey. A look back. A look into our past. Silent voices. Uncertainty, censorship, how the cancellation of people and freedom can be a danger in our society and in our world. And finally, a look forward and a look into the present, a concern for the future that awaits us. The most important part of our project is the program. The composers who make up this program are composers that live through tumultuous times and their personal experiences in that context influence their music. A context of war and a political environment that impacted their works. A look back with Ravel, Bevem and Shostakovich. And a look into our present with Valentin Silvestrov performing his piece Icon and Hannah Habriletz. We are very really lucky to know already that the presentation of our project will take place in Madrid at the Fundación Carlos Danvelis, a special place well known for its connection and vocation to Europe. During the performance, short phrases and quotes from universal creators will be recited, and the public will be invited through a QR link to interact voluntarily, expressing their ideas and emotions on the web page that we will create for the occasion. We believe that despite all this darkness, through artistic creation, things can flourish. 
the best feelings that human beings can express and with many questions still to be answered. This program raises awareness about the need to maintain our spirit, the roots of our diversity, inclusion, and the search for a space for everyone in this world. Thank okay. you very much, Sophia. That <laughs> That's great. And well done. You kept within your four minute maximum. That was very yeah. excellent. That's that's really great. OK, we're going to hear one more and look at one more. And then we're going to go into some breakout rooms where we'll have a look at the projects in more detail. So, Katerina, can I ask you if you'd like to tell us and show us what your project is? Hi, uh, so I'm Katerina. Um, I'll just be talking about my project today. I have met this amazing violinist at Guildhall and we love improvising together. And through our journey of improvising, we found this project, which we hope will enable us to reach new audiences um, towards creative performance and classical music. Um, so we plan on playing, um, centering a performance around Bartok, uh, the 44 violin duels, which we selected 10 uh, pieces from and um, use those in different formats to target different audiences. We have a, a sort of workshop for young children, um, letting them see through the uh, imagination of animals as the duels and uh, workshopping with them how different things can sound um we have that one we have um a concert for less regular concert goers that uh, do not experience classical music very often um going to community centers giving performances in pubs um shorter version and um, more informal and we have longer chamber concerts for musically educated listeners uh, which consists of high quality chamber music and um, an additional element of creative uh, performance and in all these three uh, sort of project concerts um, a very key part is the uh, interaction with the audience um, sort of hoping to lift the veil of what goes behind um, a normal performance, what goes behind the preparation, what goes to our minds as musicians, um, making it less formal and stiff and distant and more inclusive. And um, we hope that that is, um, yeah, that's going to happen. So we have, um, a concert plant in the Milton Court um, in, at the end of this summer, June, uh, which will center around the Bartok, um, have that interaction with the audience and also feature some other uh, improvisations by me, Tulia, and two other um, musicians that are improvisers and wonderful musicians. And mainly the funds for this uh, award is what we want to do with them is to make um, video material to make it easier um, and more accessible to reach those audiences, to apply and show people that um, this is what we want to do and this is yeah hopefully with that reach or goal uh, to target those audiences katharina thank you so much this sounds really interesting um so look we're now going to do an experiment which is to go to breakout rooms with both of those groups 
Um, I, I'd said before, Anastasia and Hugo, would we, we, you decide which ones you go into? I, I mean, Hugo, it sounds like you ought to go in with Katerina. You're such an extraordinary improviser yourself, but I don't know whether that works. Anastasia, are you happy with that? You go in with Sophia? Yeah, great. OK, Katerina and Hugo, and I think I might join that, actually, will have a little session uh, for 15 minutes or so to look at the project. And Anastasia and Sophia will have one, and I guess Helen might join that. And um, and the rest of you could decide which ones you want to go to. So Alkistis, Hayaka, um, and, you know, if you want to join Marlin, you just decide if you want to go into a breakout room or you don't need to. And let's say it's now about 12 minutes past. Why don't we plan that we'll be back here at the latest by half past? And um, your two resident experts are going to just talk through the projects, talk a little bit about the way you present them, what the projects are, and then we'll come back and have a little bit of a, a presentation back off that. But let's see. And of course, it's very difficult to put a lot of information into four minutes. Yeah. But I'm still not sure what the what what the project actually is. Is it a series of concerts? Is it a commissioning? Yeah. Program? Can can you tell us a little bit more about Yes. So for us the idea because we we are an official uh, string quartet uh, and for us it's really important to to talk about serious topics and to make from there so our idea was made from there uh, from yeah actually actually to make the, the audience um, aware of with the music about the political situation that is happening now in the world and uh, in Europe also so we from there we found some pieces and some composers that could fit into it and it's just like um mm. also we will uh, create a, a web page uh, so the people after the performance can interact and can express uh, how they feel with the music we will also um say some sentences during a piece and another piece from um um yeah o oppressed uh, creators so the topic is is, uh, is a really big topic, no? But it's also it talks about the freedom, uh, the oppressed ideas, the cancellation of culture. Um, so but we wanted to, me, to. So so it's a concert program that you've developed yeah. for next season. Okay. Yeah. I think um, I would recommend that you say that very clearly from the very okay. beginning that uh, um, as a as a quartet. You have put together a program, but it's not just another program for another season. I think it exactly it really stated very, very, very clearly that this this is uh, a different way that you you're yeah. trying to come up with a different way to program your concerts. Um, yeah. You know, not to just put together pieces that sound good together and fill the required length of time no of course and, but, and we didn't want this of course yes of course. exactly so i i think in in your presentation it it really needs to be because your your presentation can then become the basis of your marketing materials because the exactly. important, a very important thing is that you're putting together a program which the presenter of the concert will then need to sell to an audience. So yeah. you're first selling it to a concert hall or a festival. They then need to sell your ideas to, you know, the general public. So the more, the clearer the package, the more you give yeah. them to work with, the easier it is for them because they're already kind of selling it secondhand, basically. Yeah. You know I mean? So it's um, it's in your interest to give them all these, you know, very clear marketing tools. And I would say, you know, as somebody who organized concerts, an artist who comes to me and says, I have a marketing toolkit is an artist I'm going to book because <laughs> that, that makes my job much easier. And that means this person is thinking of the audience, the people who are going to be in the concert hall. So yeah. I would encourage you to develop that part okay. of it because your presentation is also the basis of that marketing toolkit because you can yeah. 
you know, for instance, the video that you've put together, that can become the video that will be mm. used to advertise the concert on social media. All they have to do is change, you know, put in the date and the location. Yeah. And, and you have these these materials. So I would think of your presentation as a kind of a, a marketing tool in the making, so to say. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you. We we saw it as a, an opportunity also to make a statement about the situation and make a program. That's why I say also in the video that the most important part of our project is is our program because it's based from from that. But of course, yeah, like yeah, I understand completely. Yeah, that it, it has to be more clear in some way. And is it for a particular season or is it um, is it just I mean, what 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 is kind of your timeline on this? Yeah, so we will start uh, before before summer, before summer. Okay. Yeah, the presentation will be before summer, and then September, October, November, we yeah, we will start with it. We already contacted with uh, a bit of help of of Marshall, a letter from the prize uh, from the award, uh, some places that are interested, and yeah, so. It will be before summer for sure. Yeah. Okay. That's that's great. I I would say that also because that um you know maybe in one of the slides uh one one of the subtitles could be you know available from this point onwards. Yeah. You see what I mean? Because then then uh, um you know again it, it makes it easier because if you sell do do you have a do you have management do you have a booking agent that works with your quartet? Mm -hmm. No, we we okay. it's through through our okay and our yeah okay. So I would say you know if you can um advance this pre develop the presentation a little bit further and and add you know things like available from this point onwards, add the the QR code, add the website, the web page, the one yeah. that you're developing. When mm -hmm. it's ready, you would add it, and then you can just send these emails to concert organizers saying, we've put together this video. The purpose of this video is to present ourselves and our program to you. But also if you book us, you can use this video or you know, a version of yeah. this video to sell these concerts to the people, the, the, the potential uh, audience members. And I think that speaks very much in your favor because uh, like I said, it makes their job much easier. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I I wish, you know, and of course there's no time in the four minute span, but maybe in the kind of the next version of this presentation um, that I, I, I wish um, I had was a little bit of information about um, Hannah Havrilitz and, and uh, Valentin Silvestre, because, you know, of course, Shostakovich, we, we all know who that is, but the, of the course. younger names, I think yeah. it's important you know, where are they from? Exactly, exactly yeah. what you, you say. I thought about it when I was already like planning the minutes that to say it's really important to say also that they are Ukrainians. And for example, Hannah Havrilet died in the war right now. Oh I God. wanted to explain a bit yeah. more about, about about them. That is exa exactly really important for, for to know a bit the context of, of the program. Right. It's true that I, I I had actually a bit more time and that it be, uh, would have been really nice that to to say uh, uh, we talk about Rostakovich and all these old well-known composers but of course Silvestrov also Ukrainian he had he had to when the war started mm -hmm. he had to move uh, to Berlin I think mm -hmm. and and Hannah Havrilets died from from uh, I think as uh, something yeah from actually was from from the war that's that, so this is this is really important yeah 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 that that i you know maybe even a, a photograph and the you know the, the 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 years you know of their life from you know i don't know the year she was born and the year she died you know just to to give people the sense of this is really current this is really urgent i know you you say it but this this would underscore that i think that's um yeah that, that, that would make it so much more powerful mm -hmm. yeah thank you thank you helen for taking notes this is yeah. uh, so yes. I, I wouldn't be able to do both at the same time <laughs> i just dropped a link to a jam board 
which Marshall has set up. And if you click on there and ah. you find Sophia's room, um, I've just been taking some notes, as I've said in the chat. Oh, wow. And maybe we can take a look at this and um, see if there's anything else that we'd like to add to the Jamboard before we go back in seven minutes time. That's incredible. Thank you for Thank doing Thank you so much. Yeah. Because really structures all our, our comments. Yeah. I think what, what you were saying, um, Anastasia, about making promoters' lives easy is really important. I mean, speaking as, you know, I work in communications, so I'm also on the other side of this. And every, you, you know, if you have someone who says, yes, here's my biography, it's correctly written, you can shorten it if you like, you don't have to ask me. Um, here are my photos. My photos are in high definition, so you can use them for print or for web. Um, you can download them all here. All the photographer credits are on there. Then you've just saved your promoter an hour of frustrating work sending you emails yeah. and chasing things up and it really makes a massive difference absolutely the other thing that um really interested me anastasia was what you were saying about giving a signal to the promoter that you as an artist have thought about your audience mm. can we maybe um talk about this a little bit more yes i i would be interested to know sophia for if if you have um an idea of the profile of uh, your audience, who typically comes to your concerts? Um, yeah, we actually were thinking, it's actually also not in the video, but we were thinking also to, to go to some schools mm. and to make it a bit, uh, maybe the performance a bit smaller, not because it's really, it's actually long, but to, to make the performance a bit smaller and, talk and to show it uh, also in the schools for for maybe like 12 14 15 year old students uh, that could be nice also and to have also we thought to have some notes about the uh, about what we are playing the political environment and and everything to to have these notes um yeah but that's why we also well to, to play it in schools and also to a regular audience. Uh, that's why we were also looking for uh, foundations uh, in Spain that uh, fit it well with the topic. Uh, but to interact also with them, that's why uh, we say the QR link to interact with them so they can feel free to express uh, what they feel about the performance. Um, but yes, it was an idea to to also perform it in, in the schools for, for kids. But um, we haven't discussed it so much. So that's why well, that's why it's also not uh, in the in the presentation yet. But that was mm. that was an idea. Yeah. OK. OK. But I think this um, component, I mean, the, the performance on the stage is one thing, but uh, the ideas that you have on how you can um, take it further with 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 a with a conversation with uh, an interactive aspect that that's that's extremely important because uh, promoters will have um, specific series for that you know and yeah. then for younger audiences for newer audiences people who you know maybe are not uh, um, maybe they don't come very often or maybe they haven't yet been to a classical music concert and uh, the fact that it's a little bit more um how can they say uh that it's more than just an hour or an hour and a half of music that there is a story behind it there is a narrative and there is a way to learn something from uh from, from yeah. this experience i think that that's also it makes it attractive and it's something that needs to be highlighted that uh the, the, there are additional kind of wraparound activities that could be designed because often for instance you know a, a part of what we do at primavera is you know we manage artists and uh often when when we are discussing an artist engagement for a concert you know the promoter will come back and say well does this person speak you know do, do they do they like talking to uh to their audience is there a, a pre-concert or a post-concert conversation that we can imagine is there a school activity is there because they also have this uh um you know the the, the whole program around the um, the concerts that that this could uh, uh, fit into, and the more of these boxes you can tick, obviously, the the better it is. 
Hugo, any initial thoughts? Yeah, the Bartok, what a great, great start. I've played them many times um, in various combinations with lots of different instruments. So I um <laughs> part of part of the um yeah, it's it's such an incredible um variety of of styles from the very easy to the very complex. So I think it's great as a as a starting point to reach out to different audiences. Do you want to just just so I have a bit more meat on 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 the bone? How are you presenting it to the to the children relating to animals? Just one of each so people. the way we did it is we have had one workshop like this in the past. So um, the way we do it is uh, we see every duo as a different animal, and we try to show them the kids how we make it sound like this animal, and then um, sort of ask them in return, you know, which animal would you like to see this as? Um, how can we make this happen? Uh, why does a bear sound like this? You know, uh, stuff like that. And I, th I think it's been, I mean, the one time we have done it, it's been very, we've had a lot of positive feedback from the kids, sort of hoping to um, make them see the world of imagination that you can put in your music, uh, sort of, yeah. Okay. One one little reflection is what you um, can then turn a little on its head and ask them which animal would you like us to represent. And then either you could exactly take... that's yeah that's what we did yeah. I think any for me any audience interaction is um, it's often as, as performers we we we're presenting we're sort of showing our ideas but it's always very nice particularly if in when one's improvising to get all the inspiration from from the kids and get them to come up and sort of talk about their animals what they love and then then respond to that and even create stories around it improvise around it so one can develop that i think in workshops and get them to go and create a story out of their favorite animals and then you improvise to them and them the bar so that there's just so much scope for for storytelling. I think with kids, it's all about story. Well, I, even for adults, it's all about storytelling, um, all concepts <laughs> of storytelling. Um, then let's jump, uh, just jump to the Milton Court. So you've got four musicians, yes? Two violinists and the other two instrumentalists. No, actually, so it's, um, it's myself, I'm a bass player. Um, there's a violin player, um, a soprano and a pianist, which are sort of sides, a side of the main project uh, we do regularly improvise together and so i thought it would be very nice to include this in this project to try and pique some people's interest in improvisation nice. and how are you shaping the, the whole program um so it, it would be a longer um program and the central would be bartok but we plan on sort of making it also including some other repertoire like um in different combinations like uh Botticini, um piece um some Bach and for example the if the audience had any thoughts or any um suggestions for the ensemble for for us um that there would be a part of the program where we um read some of those suggestions yeah. and improvise yeah. with them. The idea is that it's sort of a non-stop thing. Right. Um, so what, especially with the Bartoks, how we also see them is that Tulia and I improvise interludes in between each, um, each right. short duet and a, a postlude at the end. Um, but it would be, yeah, it would be a sort of continuous going from one atmosphere to the other, making transitions, um, improvising in between. Yeah. And sort of movement, you've got four players, the movement in the space, have you thought about how you might choreogra choreograph it? Yeah, so um, we, we would love to start at very different points in the whole. Um, very nice and interact you know also so the audience has a different view we can come close I, that's sort of the vision is we start very far apart and yep. come a bit closer uh, towards the end 
sort of the climax. <laughs> Fair enough. I think the choreography. Um, I mean, yeah, but it. Yeah, simple choreography. And when it comes to the sort of the the videoing and how you're going to capture that on, yeah, on video. What what are your thoughts behind that? Um, yeah, so the one of the main frustrations of trying to get this project off the ground is that it's so hard to define and it's sort of hard to sell to other people when they don't really know what actually yep. is it about. So what we wanted with the video was to sort of capture the performance and sort of the feeling of, of how it is uh, so that we can also, you know, show other um, artist managers, community centers, anything so we can schools, so we can sort of, um, yeah, get get them to let us play for, well, for the sort of to, to summarize the essence of what you want out if, if, I, if you were try if I'm a promoter, and you, you, want, you want to say, okay, this is a program we want to sell. Can you put it on? Help, just give me just uh, a pitch. A pitch of, give, give, give sorry. Me, uh, of, say, of this, is, this is the, pro yeah, I'm a promoter. Say, this is the project you want to sell. And how can you persuade me? What is it about the project which is different? Um, so I think the key part is the interaction with the audience the um, less formal, stiff um, concerts, um, trying to make everyone feel inclusive in, in the concert and make everyone sort of feel a part of what we are doing. And how, I mean, obviously that's what, <laughs> and that's what most performers want and try to do. How, how are you going to do it more specifically? What is it in the music, in your performance, in your, the way you react with the audience? How is it that you're different from other musicians who obviously want to relate to their audience, want to have new audiences? What, what is it special and what's special about it? Um, well, the improvising element for sure. Um, I think, you know, talking a lot with the audience and trying to really get them to influence what they're doing is something that not a lot of people yep. are doing at the moment. So we would really, you know, love to actually take suggestions from the audience on what we're doing. Right, and this is, this I think would be the an interesting thing, because this is very unusual. Um, people do improvise and you get a melody and you improvise, but how just, how would you, practically do the qr code and what can they suggest are there sort of okay you can suggest a melody you can suggest the rhythm what are the sort of parameters that the audience are given because they can't say play a tchaikovsky symphony on a bass well they can do but exactly <laughs> sort of parameters which you give the audience um so also one of the great things about having a singer in the group is that um we try to do some storytelling elements right. to the music. So also, um, we were thinking of you know reading a poem in the in the concert and asking the audience, you know, what does this make you feel? Um, conveying the feelings, or does this remind you of something? Or a simple sentence, um, a feeling. Um, but also a well-known team and um, stuff like that, but definitely having a sort of story or... This, this has to be all done before the concert, if it's for the QR code of Alma's and Rabbins, yes? Yes, yeah. So practically, what, just how, how is it, does it practically work? Um, well, it, this is something that we've been thinking about but definitely it will also involve you know talking to the audience not only a qr code if mm. we play something it's sort of like with the kid what would be helpful most of is define exactly how you to the audience and i think we often um the sort of improvisatory nature is fantastic and we all and we thrive on that and i love that i love 
improvising in the moment in the concert. But I think some things also, it's great to really plan them out. How, what beforehand do we give the audience? Okay, we give them the text of the concert, say, respond with your thoughts, with your emotions, or respond specifically with composers, and really define what it is. And then think in the concert, okay, we're gonna have this 10 minute session where it's gonna be pure interaction with the audience. We get five words from the audience. We create a piece out of it. In mm -hmm. So I think the sort of definition of how I interact with the audience, both pre-concert and during the concert, is something which you can really hone in on. And then that will, will I think, shape also what repertoire you, um, you decide to use, it might shape the choreography. I think for me that this the idea of the QR code me in pre input in the audience is is something which is very interesting it needs to be possibly defined more clearly and then how that interaction takes place live in the concert so there's both those pre concert preparation with the audience and then during the concert how is that response um, could mm -hmm. it be a bit the, cue, the the words from the audience come up on a screen somewhere so you see they see themselves ah that's what i wrote or yeah. it, maybe they can send the picture they can you can give a um a poem or the music they say this is the picture that comes to mind you can show that picture so i think that the, the specific to the interaction maybe is what you should really really think about there's some really interesting stuff there and whilst you've been talking I've been noting on the jam board, so we can bring those back up and report. Alkistis, is there anything you would want to kind of say at this stage, just very quickly before we're thrown out of the room? I also agree that it's always the best way to make an advertisement of a concert is to make it as specific, and because that's why it will become special, I think, because it will be clear. Yeah. Even more very than good. Special, special, because for sure it is, but. Uh, very good. Me. That's right. I, I'd have something to add if I had a moment, but we don't at the moment. I just want to talk to you at some point about how you present what you want to do, because I think that's a really important thing. And I know you're improvising. It's going to be silky smooth and fascinating and entertaining. And there's an awful question for us musicians. How do we get that when we talk about what we do? But let's leave that for now. Hugo, thanks very much. Well, we had fun in our room. We probably wanted about three times as long as we had, but that's fine. <laughs> And what would be really interesting now is just to get a kind of quick download of, you know, what are the major things that that you came across? What are the kind of salient points? OK, Sophia's room. Talk us through this. Well, we've talked about how this video, which is presenting the project to us here today, can also become the beginning of uh, a promotional toolkit that can become a marketing toolkit that would be used to sell these performances to future audiences. And that if this quartet comes into, you know, comes into contact with a potential promoter and says, okay, here's who we are, here's our program, which is available from this point onwards. And here is a link to our a marketing um, a toolkit that includes this video that you can alter with, you know, by adding the dates and the names of the venue, that that makes their, the, the life of the promoter that much more interesting. And it also shows to the promoter that these young musicians have, um, have actually thought about their audience in putting together a program. And it's not just a collection of pieces that sound nice together and fill the required length of time, but that are actually um, united by a particular concept or a narrative, um, which in this case is, is very strong and very um, uh, pertinent to what's going on in the world today. Um, we've talked a little bit about the ways that the video can be developed with that purpose in mind. Uh, maybe adding the timeline saying that the program will be available from this point onwards, um, talking a little bit more about the two contemporary composers and giving them, you know, more exposure maybe by using, you know, adding their photographs, adding their, uh, um, some biographical information. For instance, we've learned that Hannah Havrilitz is a young uh, female composer from Ukraine who died in the war that's going on right now. And I think, you know, 
putting that information into the video presentation makes makes it that much stronger you know I, I'm I'm curious to hear her music now that I know that you know is she's no longer just a name and um so uh basically yes that that's that's what we've talked about about the way that this video can be developed um in a way that makes it useful also for potential uh content organizers right and it's really interesting to hear that very practical side of yeah. what you're talking about which does impact with us but the other group but in a slightly different way and maybe uh, hugo do you want to talk we could go on to the next project i've put right in the middle of this what's the usp and how to express that but just talk us through some of these points hugo as you saw them i think what I, we all agree was this this is specifics of the project would be great to the sort of interaction with the audience how and in what way and why is it special and instead of the presenting presenting this and how can we present that in a more sort of cogent and coherent, coherent way um and then we looked into the specifics of how if one has the sort of interacting with the qr code before the concert with the audience how is that sort of what are the parameters how can they respond during the actual concert what um uh, how can how can a live situation occur with audience responding um and then we talked a little about the children's concert how it we it's all storytelling and the the stories come from the children and how we can create music from them as opposed to imposing a, a story for them to sort of interpret um we yeah i think and then Mar what marcus was about to um uh, and um, into was the sort of presentation verbally of a project and I think uh, Catherine's project we all understand and we in it yeah this is this is good and exciting um, but there needs to be a a more focused presentation of it um, to exactly what it is that she's doing which is different what's specific and how can we um how can that be expressed just verbally yeah and and Hugo in that from that point of view I thought the really interesting thing is it's sometimes not what you say it's it's actually the way you talk also, i mean yeah. anastasia and hugo you you guys are so relaxed when you suddenly these projects have been thrown at you and you're completely relaxed in saying well i think this and i think that and when you work like that you put your audience at their ease and that's that's a good skill to kind of think of and we musicians don't always have that it's great when we get the instrument but that's an interesting side as well alkistis did you want to throw anything in because we just at the end had a little bit of time for you to to talk as well yes i, I think i i agreed mostly because i'm also experiencing in this moment writing applications or trying to convince for special programs different uh, projects that are going on um I'm very convinced about how and what words should I choose and how the elements individually should be very, very specifically clarified. Yeah, um, yeah, the, and that's true. We all talked about this, the devil, as we say in English, the devil's in the detail. And uh, Hugo, you love this idea, but you were, you were probing with questions about what does that actually mean? How would you actually do that? And I think that's that's another interesting area. Listen, Alkistis, we're we're talking with you. Why don't why don't we hear your presentation? Let's move on to the next two presentations. So my idea started a long time ago when I felt that classical music or any kind of music needs to be shown to all people and not only people who have it at the most easy point or have the most access. And uh, when the war started in Ukraine, um, there was a huge amount of refugees that came in the Netherlands, and then we. I organized two concerts for them. One also got a very big donation from many parties and we, we managed to really have a very spectacular event. And um, I also decided that in this award, basically I want to establish these concerts for different refugee centers in the Netherlands. Um, and especially the ones that are in actually a much more complicated condition than the refugees that came from Ukraine because they are European refugees, while people not from the EU have much bigger problems getting their permits settled. And also, uh, one important thing that um, I also discovered the last month is that apart from presenting a concert to some people and also specifically to refugees, uh, very interesting is to play with them and to actually be on the same spot and level without 
distinguish and that we are coming to bring you a concert. But actually recognizing that many of these people have a very rich culture and they play amazingly, even if they're not professional musicians, as to as we can call. So I have a little video with this experience that we had um, that will show a bit of what can happen. <laughs> fantastic yeah it was really fun really touching thanks. experience thanks so much for that so that's I great think... well it's going to be interesting for one of the two of you talking about that one and now marlin do you want to just give us your presentation and, and hayaka maybe is going to be with you or you, well we'll see you decide yes um so i also have a presentation feel free to interrupt if something doesn't work um yeah some of you know us already our project is a collective named per se and firstly i'll introduce ourselves so with me i have my colleague and friend hayaka who is a violist and i'm malin and we founded this together so hayaka maybe you want to go on sure um how we first met really quickly was in a champion music project and we realized that we shared a lot of the same ideas and visions and one of our main visions um, has been to create a space for artists of different cultural roots aesthetic backgrounds and skills to come together and kind of reflect on ourselves and the society we live in uh, through the lens of interdisciplinary art and um, a few questions we've been thinking about along the way and um, been asking ourselves are what can we grow and develop out of meeting as a collective with the public and by removing artistic boundaries and boundaries and discovering facets of ourselves in the process a bit more in depth about our goals as a collective is um, an overarching aim of ours is to encourage and foster this cultural exchange within our community and uh, we want to do this by crafting immersive experiences and in, or in order to do this uh, we want to challenge ourselves to explore and discover potential performative formats that play with and mix an array of genres, artists, art forms, and uh, that culminate in an experience that can stimulate just more than our eyes and ears. Yes, and we had the opportunity in this past year to present several projects, among which we have um, Fempali, which was a festival celebrating feminism, where we filled all three floors of a museum in Stuttgart with only music and poetry of female artists. In April, we did another project uh, called The Dark, uh, which took place in an underground art space, um, also in Stuttgart. And uh, there we wanted to explore the question of what arises in the absence of light and sight, uh, what we lose, what we gain, and what makes us so uncomfortable in this space. And uh, we incorporated uh, light installation, electronic music, um, an actress and a uh, Japanese Buto dancer and um, mixed it, blended it with um, music by Zanake, Sharino and Amelia Maya. And this is one of the projects that we'd like to further expand on and repeat in different venues, whether they be maybe museums or clubs. Yeah, we did two more projects in this uh, museum in Stuttgart, which were these two, one about love and the other one on the history of the city where we included, for example, music of Hildegard von Bingen. And one of the projects that we, we've been recently brainstorming on and working on um, revolves around the second string quartet of Morton Feldman, which is um, known, well known for its length. Uh, it spans about six hours and performed uh, straight. 
And uh, we wanted to explore what kind of experience we can develop out of this um, kind of time stretching and the tension we can create with that. Yeah, so in the in this year, we've already accumulated a quite diverse range of artists, um, among which are percussionists, performers, composers, actors, cellists, costume designers, um, voice artists, yeah. And last but not least, I guess, is our visions for the future. Um, this year, we were focusing on establishing a kind of core um, for our collective in terms of ideas and concepts and finding our common language as a group um, and trying out a few different ideas as we did in these uh, past projects. Um, in the next year, we want to expand on our projects such as DARK, applying them in different locations, uh, developing them into series. And our goal is to plan and perform six programs per year throughout the months and in 2025. We want to continue realizing new collaborations uh, with different combinations of artists and to possibly offer workshops for artists as well as audiences regarding specific themes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's two really very different and very, very interesting projects there. Look, um, Anastasin, Hugo, who, what do you want to choose? We're going to, to have to, to, we're going to have to toss a coin or yeah, yeah. A straw. Do a quick toy between the two <laughs> really, I'm, I'm having trouble choosing. Both are so interesting. Yeah. Somebody has to decide. <laughs> Hugo, what do you think? Do you want to go for one? Have you got a choice? I'll, I'll go for the second, simply because the interdisciplinary is something I, I do. It's my bed and <laughs> yeah, um, bread and butter. So we can talk okay. about, yeah, I think that would be, that would be nice. Everybody else was a refugee, right? Yes. And, and they had their instruments also... with them or were the instruments made available to them? they have sometimes instruments with them or they might find i mean it really depends of course that's also in this particular place but i know also in amsterdam i know also in another community that there are so many musicians because for them you can be a musician quite easily it's it's a very culturally included it's incredible that people who run from the war under the most strenuous circumstances think to bring their instrument with them it's it's really that that speaks to their identity as an artist i i find that really moving yes me too it was very moving and uh yeah i i was thinking this is a great uh possibility of expanding because the initial idea was it, that it would be only concerts um so to be performed for them and maybe every time having different musicians, different ensembles, maybe even ex EYO members. But also since now I'm also doing jazz and I also find it great to just improvise with them and, and play mm. without deciding before. It, I mean, it's more unpredictable, of course, but um, I think this could be incorporated at least. Maybe mm. not every every location, but in some locations, it's definitely possible. Okay, but how how did it happen? When so you came with the idea of playing music for them, and then it d evolved into this idea of playing music with them. Can can you describe the moment when that vision, that idea, shifted to something that included them as part of the performance? I think when we went to this place, because actually we were not the protagonists. I mean, we were different people that they don't see so often because they have, of course, they are together most of the time in quite a specific community. But then I didn't feel like I have to, I am the one that they have to listen because I had to listen so much. Mm. They also are so good at what they do. So when we went there and we saw how equal it felt to be there, Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out who is a refugee and who is not, because they are not refugees; they are people with their own identity. So I don't want to call them refugees. Mm -hmm. It's I don't think it's not a condition that defines them. So to me, that's a very important element. And when we went there last May, basically, and we had this experience, we also we also performed the concert at another point for Ukrainian refugees. That was also a very moving experience, very special. But things can happen, and I think it's very beautiful to see it that way. Mm -hmm. 
No, I, I find it very interesting what you say that, you know, you don't want to reduce them to this label of a refugee because, you know, refugee is somebody who ran away from the war, ran away from, from uh, tragedy. But in fact, when you see them as people, it's uh, it's a completely different um, thing and it's a different way that you you interact with them. You know, they're no longer only people in need. I mean, they are people in need, first and foremost, in 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 really difficult situation, but not not only. There's a lot more. And I think giving them this kind of a, a voice and an agency to perform really, first of all, instantly elevates them out of this very reduced um place where you know they're they're refugees they're just simple people you know numbers of people who who ran from one place to another and really um gives them uh, a completely different much more complex uh identity so bravo i'm 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 really moved i think that the the, the project is very uh um has huge value so let's talk about how how this might be developed Mm -hmm. um have you presented this to anybody yet this idea other than this group um well first of all i have some musicians in mind that we worked a bit in one of the concerts and uh, that i'm sure will be up to participate in this so that's one pool of people and um I'm also now I did some workshops with musicians without borders that they have they are in the Netherlands and they do a lot of uh, they go to refugee centers and they do basically workshops with refugees some music workshops and um, so it's more of like working with them with the element of music in very basic levels of course like with rhythm mostly or with objects very simple things but very fulfilling and so with them, we're also going to go to some places and um, I will just observe what they do. And I am in contact with them about asking them where do they think that I could, that would be the best location to start organizing something like this in a more um, established basis. And also uh, the person that invited me to go to the, as I'd say, in Utrecht, um, is very willing to expand this with me and work more. He is very, he knows very well um, how this works because he's been many years doing this particular music evening. Mm. So he's connected to a large network. So, so your goal is what precisely? Is it to develop the kind of methodology for how you work with the, with these people and how you involve them? Or is it the development of this network of people, musicians who are willing to spend their time? Is it, well, what what are you looking for in, in the next uh, phase of developing this idea? So I think the goal is to, to establish uh, at least maybe once per month or twice per month, let's see how feasible it is when that starts. Um, that's, a group of musicians goes to a location and either performs or performs with. I mean, it depends mm. on the location. It can also be a concert, but it can also be playing together. So I, I want to make it something regular that I will just, maybe I will start also playing there, but then I can also just send people to, to play. I don't have to always play myself, just to organize on a regular basis um, that this will be happening because there are so many locations in the Netherlands as well. And it's just always something great to happen because it's not really happening often. Um, so that's the goal and the funding that I will get and I will also try to get more is to also give a small compensations to musicians that will maybe perform a concert or organize an evening. I would suggest that um, just taking one step back from from this idea that it might be useful to have some kind of a, a name or a title for this idea because as it develops I think it's um you know be, it, it will start gathering some momentum and people will have heard about it and somebody will have 
told them a story about an event like this or you know an experience that is similar i think it would be useful to have kind of a, a a name that makes it easier to recognize that you know that what what we're talking about is a program of making music with these people and uh you know maybe a name and a, a one sentence description of of what it is because that it makes it instantly because it, it it's it's a it's a complicated idea you know it seems very simple when musicians go into a refugee center and they either play for or play with the, the refugees but um as you said you know it's it, it there there are many variables it depends on the location it depends on where the people are from it depends on whether or not they are musicians themselves whether or not they have their instruments so it could take a multitude of forms so I think, you know, the, the concept is, itself has to become, you know, for lack of a better word, a brand, um, not in the commercial sense, but in the way that, you know, when, when we say, you know, uh, Doctors Without Borders, we instantly know what we're talking about, you know, and in, in this in this situation also, I think it, it's to 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 make sure that it gathers momentum. It's important to uh, develop a particular way of talking about it that becomes shorthand for this very very complex uh, idea. Because it, in actual fact, I think this can grow to be something huge. Because you know, refugees sadly are not going to stop coming you know they're not going to yeah. you know there is going to be more and more of it there are going to be different wars fought in different places and so this potentially can become you know a a, a very um uh, a global thing so um i think you know my my instinct says that you know if you from the very beginning if you develop a a, a way of talking and, and presenting this that this could be really helpful down the road yeah i agree and um, and also, you know, maybe um, a kind of a set of principles that would be that would shape these experiences, because, uh, you know, you, you don't want to make it very rigid. You want to keep it open and, and flexible so that, you know, the, the these events can really respond to whatever conditions they, they take place in. But you also need to have, I think, you know, a few things that you've said about why you do it. I think that maybe could be fixed in the in the kind of a you know in in the in the set of principles and and uh, guidelines for 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 what this is, so that musicians who are joining who like the idea of it can instantly know okay the the these are the parameters this is how we this is how we approach these uh, these situations and these people do do you have a website or do you have a social media presence of some kind. Um, I don't have a website yet. Hopefully, I would make one, but I have social media. Um, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm completely present in social media, but to some extent, of course. I, I mean, social media is very useful because it's um, it allows you, you know, to 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 expand this, and you know, that's how the buzz will be created around this, and how more and more people will find out and say, well, I, you know, I, I want to donate my time, I want to have that kind of an experience, because it's not really a donation. It's also, I think, for the musicians who go into these places, it's, a, it's such an incredibly enriching experience, um, that it's, it's not charity, it's not a one way thing. I mean, you are getting a lot out of it. Um, but the website is also very important, although, you know, now all communication seems to be happening on social media, but the website is important because that allows you to collect the, uh, uh, to create your own mailing address, basically to, to have a place where people can sign up for a newsletter or sign up to be notified when the next event is happening that they can participate in. Um, so I, I would think a little bit about that as as the uh i mean there there's so much to do and there's so much to think about but maybe these are the few ideas um that could be uh that that could guide your your development process so, I, I, yeah, fantastic yeah. i thought both the presentation was super clear what you're doing just to understand so the collective you're working with you've established 
sort of a, a group of people who are now working. It's, it's the same group. Which, Marlin, great, great. Okay, I had troubles. <laughs> yeah. No, as I say, fantastic, really exciting. Um, and I, just a couple of, so just practical questions. So you've, the group you're, you've collected, you're actually, you're working with them um, regularly for these projects and you're sort of building up a collective together. Yes, so the idea is that we have a flexible core. So many people are coming back regularly, but depending on the project, we don't always need, for example, a Bhutto dancer. Yep. So we want to be flexible with what fits what kind of program, which is how we kind of made that. Yes. Right. Can I suggest just one thing you could do as a group, which is nothing to do with the concerts, nothing to do with ideas, but you do sort of improvisatory sort of theatrical or meditative exercises together that you begin to sort of your ideas at a deeper level begin to resonate with each other. And you might discover that some people you become closer to, other people it's more peripheral, exciting to do, but are they really sharing the deepest values? And if you wanted to do the longest sort of term vision of the project, if it, if it feels like it's something you really want to do for a longer perspective, you've got to get the most beautiful people together with you. Um, and some of them might be specific for a project. You might specifically need some weird type of, I don't know, <laughs> dance, which only one person in the world does. Great. <laughs> Otherwise, you might want to just, um, yeah, share the sort of uh, maybe soul values, the core values, what you're really doing with that core group and really get to know them outside the sort of cre creative process, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. and that's something I've discovered a lot with with my group. Um, there are the core people whom you just you you have such close contact with, but on a different level from ideas. And you just there's a, you feel ah, you know that you meet someone you think ah yes this is this feels right the energy feels right. And I think mm -hmm. for any and I think it's, it's same same for you Sophia. Likewise with a quartet to work off the instruments, work together as a collective as a group, really looking at the 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 important question why you're doing it together because often we we have this great idea and then we get so lost in the sort of logistics and the management okay we need to sell this project, we need to do, book that we need to pay for that we, and one so i think always retouching with the core of why you're doing what you're doing and my, my question then would be why are you why interdisciplinary why why are you going to museums why are you mixing art forms what is it behind because people do it for different reasons what what's the essence behind why you're doing it i mean for me it just at sometimes it feels a bit not pointless but too limited like to just be on a stage in some concert hall playing random repertoire so i guess what or maybe our approach is a bit different we just want to base or have like a topic what we're going to explore and then whatever matches that will come into play and not just music and certain composers which always get played or yeah we just want to make a broader experience also nice and Hayaka any do you want to comment mm -hmm. I think yeah it's also a challenge and exercise for ourselves in a way also because as a performing musician at least personally from experience I'm used to following just set programs or certain projects that I participate in and this uh, moment of actively seeking out thoughts and questions we have within ourselves and um, developing something based on that has I think helped widen our view of how the arts can be utilized I find um, I may, maybe I brief I comment on what you said but briefly my experience with interdisciplinary uh -huh disciplinary workings is often based on a on a sort of central idea or topical theme as, as you said mm -hmm. Mark. um and then how can these different art forms contribute to that and yeah. for me the the balance is always the one of the dangers is the art forms don't take away from each other i think that for, with all it's interdisciplinary how can they enrich each other so you're um and i've worked with sort of rock balancers or smell um, artists or it's sort of a whole variety and sometimes I come away from the concert or experience thinking um, that in writ and I, I come from and I, this is we all come from our own perspective I come from the obviously as a violinist from a musical perspective 
And sometimes I feel that enriched the music. That really brought new facets. It brought something new to it. Other times I feel, ah, it's like sort of coloring on top and you're adding things together, but are, is the music, is the art, is the installation, is the movement, are they sort of, how are they relating? Are they relating at a core level or at a superficial level? And it's easy to do interdisciplinary stuff at a superficial level. And it, you see it all over the place. And you come away, exciting experience, very fashionable. Um, and, but how deep does it really move people? So that would be my, my question of all interdisciplinary. I think it's extremely difficult to do well. Um, I, I, my main experience is that it it feels like it's it's too many flavors. But I think you can do it in a way that these flavors, I mean, that's why you've got to be this sort of expert cook. You've got to put everything together, measure everything out um, so that they, everything balances each other. Um, and you'll you're both come from your perspective. Of what is the sort of primary uh, function? What's the primary idea? And what's the leading motif? Um, and what is connecting them? So for me, that would be the the main reflection. Having done it for, I mean, the luck with my festival, all modern. It's sort of modern and unmodern combined, but of often involving different art forms. And I might maybe I give one example where um, I give I give two examples. One where I felt it. So we we did. Um, it was uh, the concert was called um, in a mirror. And the um, in in the middle there is the Spiegel and Spiegel with with Pert. So nothing particularly interesting about that idea. Lots of people do that. Um, and during that, we had someone called Miyoko Shida, who was a sand on balance, who balanced these incredibly long sticks on a uh, on a feather. Um, it, it, and I don't know if you and you might uh, you might know Hacker. The um, this it, it's a sort of very meditative art and sort of brought into the um, and playing obviously Arvo Pert with with this incredibly slow, incredibly meditative experience, it sort of heightens everyone's expectation. What if it's gonna fall? And one sort of starts listening in a different way because of it. Um, and then what we did the second half, we played the first half all backwards. So we, we, we had played various things. Some things were palindrome and they worked backwards. Other things, we, we played a Scarlatti symphony, but performed it backwards. Um, so then we, we, then we played with it sonically. So there was a sort of connection there. And that I would say people came away with both this meditative experience, having dived into Spiegel, and then this fun element of what does music sound when it's played backwards? So there were these two elements. For me, that worked very well and had a great response something which worked less we i worked with a um we did stravinsky listoire de soldat with a kinetic painter and he painted while we were performing fantastic he, he was phenomenal um the music is so powerful and is such a strong story that after the performance people were saying wow this is this is fantastic this is really exciting but i came away feeling that was it, was it, did it really amplify? Did it bring out something in Stravinsky that wasn't there already? And I came away thinking not, and people might disagree. People thought, oh, it was the first time I enjoyed Stravinsky. So again, we all have our own reactions, but I think one needs to be very ref self-reflective on what projects, what elements really work, which artists you feel you resonate with strongly and they can bring something to further your vision. Who can you learn from? Um, so for me, that's just a little reflection of, from, from where I've gone and been through. And I now, my, my interdisciplinary stuff is super simple. I, keep, I, I feel I don't, want to, you, I don't want to mix too many things because great art basically is great art. It's, it's, it's there um, to be, you look at a painting in silence. It's you, you become immersed in it, or you listen to a Beethoven quartet, or you listen to Feldman being drawn into something. So these subtle inter interdisciplinary things. So it's not overload. I think we often, we, as a sort of culture nowadays, we love being overloaded. We, we, our mind just wants to flip from this to this and that and that. Um, whereas Feldman, as, to, as an example, it just counteracts 
everything that our culture is about at the moment. So I think the challenge is not to, okay, fill it in so people understand and be happy listening to it, but actually draw them deeper into that counter kind of cultural movement that he's in and really challenge them. So the interdisciplinary doesn't become a sort of confetti to get people to come to fun concerts, but really reaches the core of this is why we're doing it or you're doing it for the confetti and great then do it for the confetti so I, and, and there's nothing wrong with that some concerts you do for the confetti so we, i think yeah we actually had confetti in one concert love it love it that is true we had literal confetti coming down i mean it was definitely a learning process and still is and as you said some things you imagine like they are going to be amazing and somehow they don't <laughs> translate so well um and yeah there were highs and lows so i think some programs were definitely much 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 um better received can you say that? than others um so for example the dark program was one which was actually i think our best one which is why we really thought we could expand this one and work on it more and yeah and that is such a sort of fundamental issue, right? the sort of dark and light, good and evil. It's it touches you at so many levels that that already you're you're on to something very special. And just always trust you. If you don't feel a thing, you just trust your very much trust your instinct. Post concert, pre concert, with the people you're working with, and also p people you really who are there, but who can be honest and sort of yeah. at, from, a, from a space of honesty say actually what works what doesn't work any other thing any, anything else you would like to like to share Sophia do you want to throw anything into this mix at the moment from what you've been listening to you... no I I just thought uh, what Uwe was saying was really interesting and really refreshing to hear um, yeah how to to see this from another point of view and to trust your instinct and yeah i don't know yeah really interesting so and it's quite interesting for us to kind of think about why is it that we're we were i think we're all very excited about the presentation and that's yeah. another thing to think about what's the element anyway um I, I also love hugo what you were saying about keeping it simple and pure when you need when, yeah you know that it, it, if you want to make a rich brew then make it but actually beware of this overload just because you've got all these toys to play with very good. Well, we're pretty well all back here. Who wants to go first in in a reprise of where we got to? Very good. Well, we're pretty well all back here. Who wants to go first in in a reprise of where we got to? Do one of you want to present? As as you prefer. I mean, whatever. Look, I'll tell you what. I'm going to I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to share the screen and just say that in Hugo's room, I thought there were three main areas that got talked about there was some really important stuff at the beginning about values and then he went on to talking about this thing of mixed genre it's like it's this it's like if christmas has come early there's all these possibilities but what do you really do to make it work well and there was a very nice little sidetrack about inspiration and who is it that's actually inspiring you and that's a key thing hugo do you want to talk through some of this or maybe i, I can talk generally if, if, yeah. to everyone um, since we're we're sort of rounding up, for me the it's what we um as we, as we briefly talked about, it's always returning to the roots of why you're doing it, um, and it's always going to that source because um, I think we we get often get lost when we're having to do the PR, we're having to create the video, we're having to meet this person, we're having to do that. We often get lost. We we lose touch with why, um, and. If we can all, and I think the stronger the vision, the stronger the, of course, the presentation, everything grows out of that always being in touch with, with the essence. And for me, that's, and that I think it refines. And I, I also think it's, 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 it's good um, to, to have that essence also allow it to evolve, allow it space to change so one doesn't also become fixed in a certain pattern or way of doing things so one allows that so i think for me it's always it's always going back why are we doing this what's most important for us um and i think with time over the 10 years 20 30 years that that question is never too old um 
And however successful the, the project is, you might be booked up for the next 10 years. I still ask the, the question, because um, I think then there's the chance of breath, there's the chance of things growing and changing. And I think all the sort of tools one has to learn along the way about it, if it's PR, if it's whatever um, one needs to learn, um, always need to be in touch with that sort of that chord, um, the sort of the essence of why we're doing it. Great. Hugo, thank you so much. That, that, that was a really interesting, a very intense room, I must say. Very good. Anastasia, what would you like to talk to us about? Well, I found the project extremely moving. I think this is actually, you know, is a perfect illustration for why music exists in the first place. And uh, I think that this could potentially grow into something huge because unfortunately, um, you know, we're going to have refugees. They're not going away. And I think this idea of not reducing these people to this very um, sad label and actually yeah. seeing them as people and lifting them out of that um level that that we you know because we we hear in the news about refugees all the time and we sort sort of stop hearing it at that point because you know it's it's just it's such a a catch-all word for so many different types of people and so many different um destinies and circumstances and stories and this idea that you know musicians come in and play for and play with um people who can be described as, as refugees is extremely profound because that basically says, and it, you know, especially this interactive aspect, it's not, they're not sad people to be entertained with a bit of music. They're people, you know, very complex people with their own creativity and their own artistic experiences and their own uh, um, way of of uh, of responding to this world and playing music with them um i think acknowledges that that reality and uh i think that this uh, can if 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 given the right kind of structure it can become it can become a global phenomenon and um and then we we sort of talked a little bit about um several because it's not possible to talk about everything in this very short amount of time. So we focused on a few things such as um, coming up with a name for this incredible initiative, maybe coming up with a way to record the principles and you know the values. It's interesting, you guys talked about values in, in your breakout session, um, the values that guide the artists and the process, because it's not possible to develop a kind of methodology and say okay well you know here is how you do this kind of a, a workshop in a refugee center because there's so many different circumstances there's so many different variables depending on where this is happening who are the people are they musicians do they have access to their musical instruments at the moment it you know that you can't develop a kind of a, a a very specific way of doing it but maybe you can um uh, record the the values and, and principles that guide the musicians and this process that could ensure that you know it it happens for the right reasons basically and it happens in the way that um uh that allows this to happen you know for 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 these people to be recognized as as human beings as creative beings and not just you know refugees um so and and the 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 last thing that we've talked about is uh um, communication, the communication aspect of this, because in order to um, kind of promote this idea to other musicians who might like to participate, and, you know, I think it's important also to say that this is not at all a charity project. This is not just uh, a one-way street, you know, musicians bringing a bit of fun and a bit of uh, respite to um, individuals in, in, in very uh, strenuous circumstances, but it's actually equally enriching for the musicians who come in and play with them. It's it's it inspires them. It gives them very different perspectives. So this 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 really isn't um, you know the kind of one way charity. Um, but to you know, I I would imagine there are a lot of uh, musicians who would want to participate and maybe you know thinking about the ways to use social media and uh, and the website to collect. 
uh, you know, to have people sign up for newsletters to be notified when these things are happening and, and, and you know, how to participate would be, uh, would be a good first step. Um, but of course, this is something that you can talk about for <laughs> forever, and you know, in, in the way that this could be, uh, that the, the structure could be created. But I'm 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 so impressed with this initiative. I think it's fantastic. Great, thank you very much, Anastasia, and thanks, Arpistis, and I mean all four of you. Amazing projects. Um, I, I think there were a couple of really interesting things interesting things mentioned there. One I saw at the bottom of the left page, Arpistis, was about scaling because you've actually it's quite true you've you've got a really powerful idea here and you know how these things are at a certain point you need to step back and think actually this is a question often we, we we often neglect i need to know where i want to be tomorrow no where do you want to be in five years with this or 10 years and i think that's a really in, and you know, often you don't know and that's fine but sometimes knowing a bit knowing that you know the answer to that question helps you decide what to do tomorrow um who was it who said the short term is the enemy of the long term and I, I think with a project like this that's got such a kind of power. Um, one thing common to all the four of them, which I found quite interesting, and it may seem like a really strange thing, is what's the name or what's in a name? Um, and I think that's a really interesting thing. You know, I remember sitting around with an orchestra in the 80s trying to decide what we should call ourselves. And somebody said, what about the Orchestra of the Age of Enlightenment? And everybody said, you're mad. And it was a brilliant name, as it turned out. But I think with all of you, there's, there's a question there it's such a powerful act of communication the words the short words that say who you are and what you do so there's an interesting area to think about hugo and anastasia huge thanks for doing this i mean it's really good of you because this has been a kind of quick down and dirty exercise for the <laughs> four of you um we're now going to take a lot of these ideas on the jam board is full of stuff and we'll be in touch with these projects to talk about in all sorts of ways how we can help take that forwards Anybody else listening to this podcast, be inspired. Go out there and start some stuff because, you know, there are so many challenges in society these days. But one of the opportunities, which I think my generation didn't have those challenges, but the opportunities we didn't have is you can go out and try something. You can just do it in a way that I think years ago was very difficult. So let this be the inspiration. Um, and in about a month's time, anybody out there listening who's interested, we will be announcing the call for the 2025 uh, Cafe Bauhaus Awards. And in the meantime, Alkistis, Sophia, Hayaka, Marlin, and Katerina, who's now gone because she's got a concert she has to start playing. But more than her, Hugo and Anastasia, thank you so much. Great session. See you at the performances. Thank you. <laughs>